everybody. Welcome back Hi. to another live stream. I'm Addie. Abby. And we are here today to show you um, the floral patterns. <laughs> we had some technical difficulties. I'm sorry we're late. Um, but we have, we'll show you a couple different ways to create the patterns. And so one method will follow a tutorial that I already have on my channel. Abby is sharing a new method that um, if you had difficulties with the saving selections and everything, this might be perfect for you. Um, and then we'll be using all kinds of brushes. I just updated the description with them. And so if you want to refresh your page to see them, if they're not showing up, definitely do that. If you want to check them out, but we're using the um, flower builder kit to draw the base flowers and um, my watercolor and ink brush pack and Abby's overlay brushes for a paper texture and her nostalgic illustration pack. So that's what we're using. Use what you have, but be sure to check out those brushes in the description. Cool. <laughs> okay. Um, let me share my screen and cool. Um, I'm going to show you a slightly different way to make a repeat pattern. Um, I think that we've all mastered the sort of snap to the corner using the um using snapping in um procreate but this is just a slightly different twist on that so i'm sure you've seen recently that in um the transform tool there's this magnetics and snapping toggles what you want to do is slide distance all the way to maximum and velocity all the way to maximum and that means that it will snap super fast and you don't have to fiddle and fart around to get it to snap. So what I've got here is, let me show you my canvas, um, canvas information. I've got a massive canvas here. It's 6,000 by 6,000 pixels. Because I want my actual tile, my repeating tile to be 3,000 by 3,000, and I'm going to build it in the center of that massive um, canvas. Okay, so what I did to um, mark out the center of the canvas was this very, very handy new tool that's in Procreate. Um, so I'll start by filling a layer with a random color. And then I'm going to drop the opacity so I can see through that layer and make it multiply. So it's a bit more transparent. Okay. And then to get it into the center and to be half the size, I'm going to press the transform arrow and then touch one of the blue nodes on the side. And you can actually input a pixel size and it will reduce to that size. So make sure this little link is toggled blue because that, oh, oopsie. Uh, <laughs> Cause if the little link is toggled blue, it means that your ratio will remain the same. So if it's square, it'll stay square. So we're going for 3000 pixels and then it goes, whoops, down to the perfect size. And now because I've got snapping and magnetics toggled, I can drag this straight to the center of the format. And when I see the yellow cross, that means it's in the middle and I can just leave it there. So if somebody and, has an iPad with less capacity and yep. they um, can't do a 6,000 by 6,000 pixel canvas, what would you recommend for a smaller size? Just I think go, go for numbers. <laughs> Personally, I go for numbers that are easy to divide in half. So. <laughs> 4,000 pixels and a 2,000 pixel smaller one, et cetera. Okay. Um, you can still get a pretty decent repeating pattern out of a 2,000 by 2,000 pixel square. That's still very doable. Okay, and so I've stamped out some of Addie's beautiful, um, have you seen these floral builders? They are gorgeous. I just went for, just for the demonstration, these full ones where the whole flower is already made for you. And I put on some leaves. This one over here is definitely not a flower that actually exists in the wild, but let's just ignore that. Um, with this leaf. I don't think that you get dogwood roses with um, dandelion leaves. 
Um, you would have known if you had done anything. <laughs> okay, so now to make the pattern without. Um, anyway, let me just carry on. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take let this bottom rose that I've made, and then I'm going to rely on that snapping thing to whack it exactly into the corner. Let's make it, these a tiny bit smaller so that I can get more of them onto the format. Okay, we'll go with the bottom one. So I have just that one showing so it's easy to see what you're doing. And then move it so that it, the blue line forms when you hit the bottom of your um, square and go to the edge so the blue line forms when you hit the side. And then we're going to duplicate that. And then I want that to repeat over here on the outside of the right-hand side, like that. So now let's merge them together. Now you can see that wherever I move it, half of it is off the square and half of it is on. And the half that's off is reflected in the other side that's actually on. So it will always make a complete picture. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So what you are making, I'm talking very slowly. This, <laughs> this would be a um, tossed pattern repeat, correct? Yes, it's just a normal repeat, just an ordinary tile repeat. Okay. Um, we can do it with this one. Um, let's make these ones go above like that. So we'll put it so that the orange stripe that shows it's exactly in the center shows and the blue stripe that shows it's touching the bottom. Now we're going to have a problem with this one because it's too tall to do like that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be cut off. So we can make it go half on and half off like that. And then duplicate it and make sure it's, whoops. Move, man. Uh-oh. Abby, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, Avalon Cakes commented in chat and said, um, can't hear Addy. And uh. I wasn't, I wasn't talking, maybe, maybe that was oh. <laughs> part of it, but, but tell me if you can hear me now or if there is an issue that isn't coming through on our end. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone need me to recap a little bit? So we've I, got I the, yes. okay, we've got the two flowers and this one was going to be too tall to be able to move it off the page. So I've done it as half on, half off, and it snaps perfectly to the middle of it being on the edge of that square that we've got in the middle. And then we can merge those two. And now the nice thing is that you can arrange things in a more natural way and see how they're going to look when they're hanging off the canvas. See how I can get <clears throat> this, the one rows next to the other one and sort of nestled in between. And I don't have to worry about what's actually happening because the top shows me how the bottom of the stem is going to hang into the tile. And then last one, let's do this baby. Let's flip him around. Um, make it a bit bigger. And let's do that one um, over here. So put it in the center so you know you've got them lined up and half on, half off. And do another one and line them up perfectly. And now we can merge them. Is my volume better? Your volume is perfect. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, everybody. It's, it's been like three months since we've streamed and cleared I know. It has. everything. <laughs> so here we go. Okay. Now we've got our, let's just leave it at this. Hang on. I'll do another couple of pretty flowers in here just to show you let's do one of these 
Okay, so this isn't exactly my most um, incredible design, but let's just use it as a demonstration. So now we've got our design all sorted out. And these pieces are all separate and at different heights, and they're going to take up a different uh, sort of irregular shape on the canvas. So what we want to do is we want to give them a perfect square to sit on so that when we resize it, we have um, an exact shape that we're using. So we're going to make a group with a layer that we're not actually using, but it's there to guide us. And we're going to make it invisible. So we've got all our flower pieces and this invisible one and group it. And now <clears throat> what we want to do is you actually only want that little bit in the middle. So the way to get that is to resize this group to twice the size of your big canvas. So we know it's six by six. So we're going to go one, two, zero, zero, zero. Okay. And now with, without canceling the selection, use the snapping to drag it to the center. And there's our repeat perfectly. And you wow. can, yeah, let's flatten it so that I can show you. So now, um, Let's duplicate it four times, and I can show you that it repeats perfectly. So do you find that you have distortion from doubling the size of the repeat? No, because um, you make it massive, and then you bring it back to the same size, the pixels don't seem to mind. But I think if you were to just make it massive and leave it massive, it would be slightly pixelated. Okay. So there we go. You've got a perfect repeat. That is and that was pretty easy. And I like that you can visualize it sooner with the method of um, saving selections and transforming them. You don't really get to see what the full pattern looks like until you take the extra step of testing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I agree. The wind um, is howling here. Have, have Sorry. Cat out. She is she is at the door asking to be let out. So just a moment. <laughs> Okay, does, is the, are there any questions about um, this method so that um, everybody can do it and understand how to do it in going forward? No, no questions. Cool. Okay, let's, are you going to show us how to use your awesome flower builder? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Sorry, I, yeah. um... <laughs> If anybody has cats, they know they they like their in and out privileges. They don't like, <laughs> like one or the other. It's got to be both. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I created this brush pack of a few different types of flower uh, brushes. Some of them are partial. Some of them are fully drawn ones, like what Abby was using. And then we also have a bunch of individual petals. Um, and I just posted today a video on my channel of um, using the brushes. And so if, if you've watched that, some of this will um, be going over some of the similar techniques. Because um, my favorite way to use these is to start with these partial brushes. So. Let me just tap so you can actually see it. So these are clusters of a few petals from a bloom. And from here, you can then fill in the gaps with individual petals and customize it that way. And so this is a starting point, um, especially if you are drawing tilted flowers. A lot of the partial ones have um, curled and foreshortened ones. So if I, if I hide this and tap. Um, 
it, it's a good starting point to help you understand the perspective of what you are um, drawing them in. So, And you drew all of these one by one, every single one of them. Yes. <laughs> it's awesome. Thank Seriously, you. this is a, an amazing pack. I had somebody email me about like asking if I could do a pack like this because I, I released a succulent builder that's the same concept. Shortly after yeah. I released that a year ago, she emailed me and asked about it and <laughs> it's it's been that long. <laughs> well, this is must have been a massive undertaking. Um it it was but it was like uh almost meditative. Um because yeah. you're drawing the same thing over and over in slightly different forms. And so I would do it and watch movies. And it was it was actually like a really great task to kind of turn your mind off. So I'm, I'm sure you now it. have a really deep understanding of flowers and how they go together. <laughs> yeah, but not flower types. So we're not going oh. to talk about like the names of flowers because I have no idea. <laughs> um. So what I like to do is start with an empty layer and a partial stamp and then build up from there on consecutive layers above. So you add a new layer for each element that you're adding. So I have my partial here and I'm going to go in and add in some individual petals. And what I'm looking to do is fill the gaps. So all of these, all of these petals are um you'll see they have a time at the end of the name and these are suggestions you definitely can transform and rotate and tilt them but it's there as an indicator indicator to show you um how it was drawn originally and um the the placement that you can put it in if you so choose so roughly what i'm looking for to fill in the gaps here is a 12 30 uh 4 30 and like a six o'clock here um and so i might choose from those times in this list but i also might try to tweak some of the um the ones that aren't at those times so to speak and so i'm actually i'm going to start with this three o'clock and this is more flat and so i'm going to use it for this space here so i'm going to tap the transform arrow and rotate this and don't worry about overlaps. At this point, we are just going to place the petals in their initial spots and worry about erasing later. And then I add a new layer each time after I've placed a petal. And so now what I'm looking for, because this one is, is more curled here, um, I'm going to find one that is in a similar perspective for this gap over here. I love the time um, idea because it's so easy to picture it on the face of a clock. If you'd said degrees or angles or something like that, I would have just gone forget it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I hope that it's universal. I, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to choose this round cupped eight o'clock because even though it's um, – the eight o'clock is not the time that I'm looking for. I think that this is the right amount of curl that I want. And the line weight is different and that's totally fine. We are going to be um, tracing over it or painting over it. This isn't going to be the final line work or in the final piece. Can it be? It certainly can be. Um, yeah, because that's what I'm doing. I'm cheating. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Add a new layer. And now for this gap, I think this is always the parts that I cut out when I make videos where I'm trying to decide things. Um, I'm going to choose this rounded wavy 830. We'll try it and see. A lot of it is trial and error. I feel like it's really important to show people that 80% of the 
of designing anything is deciding what doesn't work. <laughs> so true. Okay, so now we have a rough flower. I think I'm happy with that. And right away, I know I want to um, have this petal that I just placed be underneath everything else. So I'm already on this layer. I'm going to switch to my eraser tool and remove the overlaps. And when you go to erase, that really is the decision that you're making is what's on top and what's underneath. And then um, moving to that layer and erasing the one that is underneath. Do you use that layer select thing where you can hold your finger on an object and then it will be on that layer? I don't. I think if I had a ton of layers, I might. Yeah. Um, but I never remember to use it. And I just find myself going in and and either like hiding and showing the layer to figure out what yeah. is what. Um, yeah. But yeah, if I, I had like over 20 layers, I might start using it. Yeah. Um, I No, I found that if I use too many gesture controls, like I was saying to you on Thursday, I just go insane because like one part of my hand will suddenly trigger the color wheel and something else will trigger quick menu. So I just keep it to a minimum. Yeah, it and, can be maddening. Um, yeah. Anytime I had to like change my quick menu because that is something that I will use. That's where I access recolor. And so I, yeah. I had to change my quick menu to like a two action gesture so yeah. that I wouldn't accidentally do it and switch tools or find myself working on a new layer. Um, and so that's really the only, I guess, non-standard yeah. gesture that I use. I've set my quick menu to um, be that little square between the opacity and the size slider. I just touch that and then quick menu pops up. And that I found to be really helpful um, for exactly the reason you say, using recolor, um, finding the exact brush that you use all the time, et cetera. Yeah, it is, it is nice for those. Um, if you can like, train yourself to use it in your workflow. Um, yeah. But if you put your iPad down and, and you're don't, not using it every day, I feel like those things, for me at least, they I lose them. Yeah. Because that to me is not as intuitive as like the two finger tap to undo. Yeah, that is, that is super intuitive. Yeah, it's second nature. I, <laughs> it actually, I go a little crazy when I try to uh, paint or draw analog style because I can't oh, tap the fingers. <laughs> I do exactly that. Have you ever been looking at an advert? Uh, you know those um, catalogs that they put in your post box for shops. I yeah. always look at the LD catalog. If I'm going to be honest about it, I look at the LD catalog and I often go to try and zoom in on the bloody picture. That's like, amazing. Where is <laughs> I'm tapping to select it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But it's it's also crazy to think about. It wasn't that long ago that this wasn't our norm. And we didn't have iPads and yeah, smartphones. Exactly. Exactly. Just, just a couple of years ago. So I want to um, show you quick what I did here. Actually, I'll undo so you can see as I erase. So this is a little trickier. I want this left petal to be on top of this one but because this edge is curled we won't see this portion here let me um okay so we will see this part oh no we will see if it's on top i would e i would want to erase this and then move on to the layer that has this and erase this one because the curl of the petal will be blocking this from view and so i just wanted to call that out because it is a little more specific for yeah. how to show that so i'm going to start by erasing this portion and then move to this petal and erase that. Okay. 
And this is like very basically is how you can put a flower together. If you want to further modify and customize it, um, you can use liquify or warp or transform on the petals. And I want to adjust this one a little bit. Um, something about this gap bothers me. So I'm on the layer that has this petal and I'm gonna go into the liquify tool on the push option. And I'm just going to nudge this up a bit, ever so slightly. And then I'm gonna decrease the size and some of these other petals just have a little more, um, I don't know, ridges, I guess. So I'm going to add that here. These brushes would be amazing for designing tattoos. <gasps> yes. Oh my gosh. I, so this is not, this is not a real tattoo. This is, um, Jaguar. It's, it's an ink box tattoo, but, um, I love drawing tattoo style things and like yeah. this for sure is like what inspired some of this pack. Um, San, let me know if I say your name wrong, um, is saying, I'm trying to find the petals brush pack. Are they available yet online? Uh, I have everything linked in the description. I added it right before I started streaming. And so if it's not showing up for you, you can refresh the page and it's the first one in uh, the very first link in the, the description on YouTube. Let me know if you still can't find it. I would love to get a tattoo, but I am so terrified of needles that I would have to be sedated. I just, don't, I just don't think general anesthetic is something that tattoo parlors are, you know, up for. Yeah, I don't think that they're allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I, I'm the same. I would love to. Um, but for me, it's like not knowing if I want to commit to something for forever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Although I would be so I'm worried sure, that I changed my mind. I feel like like if you have a mole you you just know that it's your mole and you just don't even think about it and i think that's what would happen maybe with a tattoo that's a really good point know. let us know in chat do you guys have tattoos was that part of your decision making um as far as like accepting it as a choice that you made at that time and it, it's kind of like a almost like a visual time capsule or was it something that you like knew for sure that you wanted to have for forever I'm always so curious because um, I love tattoos on other people. And I always, I always wonder like. Yeah, me too. Is, is it rude? Is it rude to ask people about their tattoos? Because I'm fascinated, but I also am like, okay, you can't ask the enormous man at the um, <laughs> chicken restaurant what his tattoo is for. <laughs> yeah, I do think it depends on. Um, whether you know the person. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love true. that. Tessa says that she is a tribal rose all down her back. She's 66 and still loves her tattoo. I oh, that's love awesome. hearing that. That sounds My awesome. sister has a gorgeous tattooed on her back. It's also, it's sort of roses and like, it's sort of a bohemian. It's beautiful. Um, I, and I think she's going to like that forever. I feel like I've heard that back tattoos are some of the most painful. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not, sure. Like you're so close to the bone, I think. Not on my back. There's a lot of meat there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I was, I was feeling my back as I was saying that. I'm like, well. <laughs> oh, interesting. If you call it body art, you get a better response from people. Ah, oh, I love that. Okay, I'm gonna say body art from now on. So another thing, this is even faster. If you want, you can use two partial stamps and stack them on top of each other. So um, you just have to make sure that they are like similar enough in style. 
but I like especially for these uh, four petal ones. That's very clever. And I do find on some of these, um, while they're still on separate layers to make these partial ones work uh, stacked like this, you might have to use the freehand selection tool and move a petal here and there, but I, it's still faster than um, choosing like six other individual petals to use. I think that might be Cosmos, that flower. Um, I feel like <laughs> that's one of the flowers in <laughs> Animal Crossing. <laughs> what is it? And I feel like those are the flowers that I know the best. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, if anybody plays Animal Crossing, let me know. I would love to. <laughs> I only got it like a few months ago, and so I, everybody else has had it a year, but um, I, I would love to play in game together sometime. I haven't tried it because I know that it would just suck away a lot of my life. And I'm all <laughs> I'm already dedicated to Candy Crush. So Candy Crush is such a solid game. Um, <laughs> I do have to say, like, I felt like Animal Crossing was really, like, just, like, what got me through depression this winter. And it was, like, oh, like everything is so wonderful in the game, and it's all so cute. And it's, like, this is so much better than real life. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good escape. I have just taken your beautiful line work and just used it as the reference layer and then just colored in that and it looks so nice that is stunning so um which brushes did you, i know you're using your nostalgic illustration pack. i just used the gouache brush so what i did was i made um you're drawing the reference layer and i went to a layer below and i just went like this automatic select Doink. and I chose a color and then I just colored it in like that that is so brilliant and I love because I, I can't do better than that line work it's beautiful it's so so lovely I'm just enthralled by, I love the, the slight color variation too. Yeah, um, I mean, it's so easy to do with such a lovely thing to start with. I think I need to do a couple more to turn it into a pattern. Otherwise, this is going to be a woeful pattern. I know, I'm looking at the time, but I've, <laughs> I've not done enough. I'm going to have to switch to some of the already drawn flowers. This is not anywhere close to being a pattern yet. The color palette you shared is so nice because of the sort of mutedness of it. And I'm using this burgundy brown over here as the um, for the line work. I just realized I forgot to link it in the description. Let me grab that link for everybody. Um, I have a, a color palette you can all download. I sent it out in my newsletter and then I forgot to add it here. But I'm so glad you like it, Abby. I um, Yeah. I feel like it's one that I have been using over and over like i always think of your bobson um, <laughs> one. i said that to somebody the other day and i was just thinking they must think i'm completely insane <laughs> well i mean it's hard to name things when you have <laughs> 50 different color palettes and so yeah. i love that it's it's a <laughs> um I'm trying, I'm coming up with a new brush pack. Um, I'm nearly finished making it. It's a textiles sort of 
uh, brush pack. I've posted a few things about it. And I'm struggling to come up with a good name. I thought of Not Your Granny's Craft Kit. And then I went online and somebody's already got a book called Not Your Granny's Craft. And I thought, okay, no, I can't Ooh. pinch their name. Um, and there's too many ultimates of everything. There's the ultimate, I don't know, mm. everything. So I decided, no, it can't be ultimate. And there's there's a lot of uh, toolkits. and Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe, maybe something like a, a play on like the sewing box. Yes. Like, yeah. So um, when you get a chance, I know you're in the middle of this beautiful center of the flower, but you should yep. um, show everybody that's with us. And then maybe they could pop their suggestions in if they have them um, for names. And then you can, you can take okay. it right there, <laughs> okay, crowdsource it. It's all in this um, set here. So these are the these are the brushes. Oh, so they're gonna look like um, real life stuff instantly. And so, you know, um, correct? Yes. Yes. I do too. So look, they're gonna do. Hang on. Let's go back to this one. So, if you want to make a button, and where did I put it? You want to make a button you just go and pick the color of the button you want go on a new layer and just go oops and make the button I love and it's all that has that. made for you so um i don't know if people will like that or if they're going to be um they're going to think that it's sort of too ready made and they want to do their own thing but We'll see. There's got to be some people who want to play button, button. For sure. And I think um, when we spoke, you said uh, for lettering, especially. Yes. And I, I yeah. think of like, like you have a mosaic brush pack and people are always looking for new ways to do their lettering. Yeah. So I, I imagine it'll be a hit. Okay, so I just have like a huge cluster of flowers here because um, I cheated a bit and copied some over. And so, let's see. All right, so this is as many flowers as I'm gonna have. We'll see if I actually even can color all of these in. Um, and I'm working in my half drop repeat canvas, which already has all of my selections saved. Um, and I actually don't think I linked that in the description either. And so I'm gonna snag that link for you as well. Let me switch back so you can see what Abby's working on while I do that. And I'm just drawing rose leaves. Elizabeth asks, um, she says it's a neat set. Would those all be considered notions? Maybe a play on words there. Oh, yes, they would. I have a, I used to have a brush pack called Needlework and Sewing Notions, but I discontinued it because they were old. But that could be a good name. My only wonder would be if um if people would make that connection unless they are uh sewists if they yes um 
in uh, when I was growing up, all of that kind of stuff was called haberdashery. <gasps> oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> was it called haberdashery in America? No, I always knew it as notions. <laughs> that is amazing. It's a funny word, isn't it? There are lots of things that are really different. Like, well, at, like as a South African, we call a traffic light a robot. And people think we're bonkers. I um I remember that from when we because we rented a car and did a lot of a lot of driving. And they say stop at the turn left at that robot. Yeah. <laughs> which and, robot? Um, and and crosswalks, which we call we call crosswalks in America. Um you called or they called them um zebra crossings. Oh, yes. I mean, that seems logical. It just... Yeah, but it also was like so perfect for South Africa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, I just shared the link for the Half Drop Canvas as well, um, which might not make sense unless you have uh, watched that tutorial and under understand it. Otherwise, it's just going to be a bunch of nonsense. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to walk through how to save the selections. I um, highly recommend you just use this canvas. It's much easier. Um, and then I'll direct you to a video that you can watch that'll show you. Um, but what the, what the canvas has in it are these guides in a group. And when you're building your pattern, I like to just keep them off. And, um, and then when you go into the selection tool on this bottom bar under save and load, there's six saved selections. So later when we're transforming the pattern, that's what I will be referring to. Um, that save and load is really handy. It's one of the best things that they've implemented. It is. It is amazing. And I don't even, I don't know when they added it, but I know I was late to discovering it. Yeah, me too. I was too, because I also couldn't figure out how to save and load. And then Georgie did a um, Instagram quick tutorial on it. And I thought, duh, I'm so dumb. That was actually so self-explanatory. It's, it's so useful. I often just save and load um, if I think I might need a selection, just in case. Yeah. The only thing yeah. that I want is to be able to um, rename the saved selections. Oh, that would be handy. But they, uh, they don't really take suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> they have that section on the Procreate forums, um, but then you have to get like 70 upvotes to uh, 70 to even be a contender yeah no. not not even necessarily like okay we'll do it you have enough but like we'll consider it we'll see if we can which i'm not a developer i don't know <laughs> it's probably super hard to execute some of these things but who knows i asked them if they would make it so that um in a combination brush you can toggle the um the relationship between the two brushes on and off. So if the one has streamlined, the other one will automatically be streamlined to the same amount. Um, and they said, no, that's not planned. And I thought, come on. <laughs> that also just is such a, like a shut down answer. Like they couldn't say, they couldn't even like lie to you and say, oh, I'll, I'll pass it on to the development team for, <laughs> for them to look into. <laughs> she did say, um, she did say, I'll keep an eye on this thread. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully lots of people want that as well. Because it would be really helpful to me. Go and upvote that, people, please. Yeah, I haven't been on the forums in a while. Um, some of the some of the suggestions are things that like I desperately want them to incorporate and others are just such like yeah, so left field like nobody wants sound in their <laughs> videos go and get a video editing software yeah oh I learned though you can import a video into procreate with I sound feel like this was on one of their not with sound but this was on one of their um 
recent Q and A's and you can drop a short video in and it'll frame by frame import it as layers. Oh, cool. And so oh, if you yes. want to draw Georgie on, did it with her dog jumping, wasn't it? Yeah. And so if yes. you want to draw on top of each frame and like make an animation on top of a live action, you can do it in Procreate, which is just like so mind blowingly cool. Yeah, that um, is cool. Janet, I am using my mid-texture watercolor. This is from my water and ink pack. That um, is gorgeous. It's got an amazing texture. Oh, thank you. Well, the texture actually <laughs> is yours um, oh, yeah. because I have a overlay layer. Um, what I have found with pattern repeats, if you want a paper texture, I've just found it's easiest to use textures as a clipping mask rather than yes. have the yeah. paper texture. Um, as something that you then have to make that into a seamless repeat as well. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I guess if you, you know, if you wanted to like put the print on something, you wouldn't really want the paper texture in the negative space regardless. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So yeah, I'm using, I'm using the mid texture watercolor brush. Are the middle of dogwood roses yellow? I feel like they are. Are dogwood roses the same thing as like wild roses? Yeah, they're those ones that don't have multiple petals in a bunch. They just have a single petal row and they sort of flop open. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say like a, like a goldish yellow. I'm going to pop over to you. Oh, my gosh. That is stunning. They're the ones that people make that rose hip jelly from. Okay. I've never had that. Um, have you seen when roses make those little red berries when they've just been left to do their own thing? They make jam out of that. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, rose hips. Yeah, of course. Yes. I was thinking of something like like – separate when you said berries I, I got confused for a second but yeah no I feel like um I don't know rose hips are super tart like I feel like I've eaten them plain yes yes same um, I've also eaten them when I was little like ah, yeah <laughs> is that a nap? not for me well and like as a kid you're like anything edible in the <laughs> wild you're like oh my gosh I'm a forager I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna subsist off the land and so of course, you go to eat these terrible <laughs> things like rose hips or um, there's uh, like clover flowers. You can pluck the oh, like, yes. petals and like suck the sweetness out of them. Oh, I remember <laughs> them being quite sour, clover. Yeah, they were not good. No. I was, oh my gosh, as a kid, I was obsessed with anything like that all of the like survival skill type things yes. <laughs> that's so cute <laughs> you just wanted to like run away and, and live in the woods wild minnesota addy yeah. I like that. <laughs> oh and i was um i would go barefoot all summer long on like gravel just like rough rocks we were tough in the old days. I don't think my kids are nearly that tough. <laughs> I was just thinking, do you remember um, when kids used to swim so much that their hair would go green? Yes. Yeah. I haven't seen that in years. Where's the green hair from swimming too much? Maybe they changed the chlorine. I don't know. Or maybe <laughs> maybe. people just didn't know how to take care of it. <laughs> maybe it wasn't so good for us. But I, I was going to say, I'm definitely not that tough now. <laughs> no, no, no. Me neither. I'm much too delicate now. <laughs> uh, um, if my hair went green, I would freak out. <laughs> I I suppose your hair might be light enough to go green, but I don't know that mine ever would. No, no. I remember there were children, you, you know that kind of kid who has sort of really blonde eyebrows? Yeah. And their hair is really blonde. They were the green hair kids. I was always so envious of um, that, like, white blonde hair. Yeah. I still am, I think. 
<laughs> because if you have white blonde hair naturally and you go gray at a young age of, you know. Oh, yeah, it looks beautiful. I think I got my first gray hair when I was like 18. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you won't notice. You don't have to worry about dying no. your hair. Why is gray hair a different texture to any other hair? It's like a piece of steel. I hate it. Yeah. Can't it just conform? Just be gray and carry on with the rest of it. <laughs> And why does it take so long to go fully gray? Like, I don't yeah. like this half pregnant nonsense. No. <laughs> I, I just, I like the upkeep. I do dye my hair. I went through a period of time where I, I was like, I, I'm not going to do it. I'm never going to dye my hair again. And then I got so much more gray. <laughs> that I oh, had yeah. To. Yeah. There's that moment where you're like, mm, maybe it's time. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I turned 30 this year. And so like maybe my 30s, I'll go gray, but it's just felt like like I was too young before. You um, could be like that um, X-Men lady who's got the white bit at the front. That looks yeah. very cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I could pull that off. Um, I love the the edginess of people who can but yeah yeah but no <laughs> <laughs> um so elizabeth asked if i can talk more about the textures as repeat pattern backgrounds and absolutely so i don't know if i'm actually going to get to making this a full repeat um we might have to go over a bit but i will show you what i mean um by just filling a layer. So I'm gonna first group all of my layers, which if you are um, using this method instead of what Abby showed at the beginning, um, you'll wanna work when you go to transform with all of your layers in a group and transform the group itself. Um, and I have an empty layer here at the bottom that I'm just gonna color drop to fill so that you can see the paper texture all over. And so depending on the paper texture that you're using, um, it's likely not a full seamless pattern on your canvas size. You're going to, even though this is a seamless brush, um, the texture is not going to naturally repeat yeah. on this, uh, I don't know, 3000 yeah. pixel canvas. And so when I go to transform this, like I would for a pattern, which um, a couple things here, I'm grabbing the selection tool and under save and load. Well, first, if it doesn't, if it doesn't let you transform a group, what you'll want to do is go into an empty layer and on the selection tool, make sure that you're on freehand and that you don't have color fill selected. If you are on automatic, selection and if you have color fill turned on it won't let you select a group so that's a that's a big troubleshooting thing so um oh well, yes that that bothers me often <laughs> i often yeah. forget and then i'm like ah oh, damn it after yeah that. i think that's the most common question that i get on either of my pattern making videos because yeah. um well color fill was added afterward and so i didn't even think to address that when i made those videos yeah but um, yeah, it's a hassle when it gives you that error message. So make sure that it's on freehand and then grab the selection tool and I'm going to select my selection one and then tap transform and flip it horizontally and vertically and release my selection, save and load my selection three, which this is where, if you want to have the guides on, this is useful to know which is which, um, this is something that I've worked in so much so if i'm going quick i apologize um but the selection one and three are the two um square things that we're transforming here and then we'll do a big rectangle here and that's the first part of making the half drop repeat so then tap the transform tool and flip horizontal flip vertical and save and load and grab my selection six and flip this one as well. Okay. So now actually this is, this never happens. Um, 
So this is an overlay brush and this is very actually super close to being seamless. But if I zoom way in, the seam is right here. And yeah, you can right just right here, see right it. Here. Yeah. And so if you um if you want to have a textured background, what you could do is go on to the layer that has your paper texture and use the clone tool, position this, um, I don't know what it's called, but position your circle somewhere um, that the seam is not, and then use that. Oh, I'm probably not on the right brush, um, but you can use the clone tool to try to make it as seamless as possible. Um, but it gets tricky because it's an overlay layer here, or if you're using yeah. a photo of a paper texture, um, you're usually working on something that's set to uh, transparency, whether it's like multiply overlay or color burn. And so it, it just is so finicky. Honestly, yeah. I don't bother. <laughs> yeah. So instead, let me go all the way back. Hide this layer. So instead, what I would do is paint in all of my elements and then have um, this as a clipping mask over all of them. So what I might do if I want to keep all of my elements separate so I can move them around is I would clip each individual one. So I would duplicate this layer and have it over. I'm drawing all my flowers on one layer, apparently. <laughs> I'd have it over this one as a clipping mask. And then if I um, you know, have another one, I I would have a overlay texture for each element that I was drawing. If that makes sense. Yeah. And so it might be a little layer intensive too at that point. Um, so it just, you know, depends on your iPad capacity. Normal disclaimer for that. And then um, by having each element be the uh, a textured like individually, when you go to um, transform it, you won't get those seams because then when you add in the new uh, elements to fill in the spaces or move things around, um, it's just over that singular portion of flower, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so you get the effect without it being um, problematic. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I have a good example of this that I can show. I actually merged the texture with the elements, but um, I used Abby's oil brushes to create gotta find out where it is um oh. i'm gonna switch over to abby's while i try to figure out where it is and then i can show you i'm just making some more elements for the repeat i'm nearly done with my bits my bits and bobs Oh, I love the, how you combine these two and the delicate little leaves. It makes it so easy to have the flower to start with. It's really helpful. Um, reference is the word I was thinking in my head, but not able to remember. How crazy. So this is how I'm just filling them in, I'm doing automatic select and then just, um, whoop, that's that so clever because it's slightly lower threshold. Then you can just speed through. It's brilliant. I love it. Okay. This is also off topic. Fascinating. Um, Natalie, back <laughs> when we were talking about hair commented as a former hairdresser, the color in your hair provides part of the body of the hair shaft. 
gray hair is missing color. So it's not actually gray in color. It just is the absence of color. So ah. that's why the texture is different. That is wild because that is wild. It feels thicker. So you would think without the with the absence of something, there would be yeah. less. <laughs> Do you reckon your body just goes like, "I'm done with this color now. I'm so bored, but pff, I'm giving up. Oh, I think it's I've had it." <laughs> Natalie or anyone else, definitely correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the follicle is actually dead. I I'm pretty sure I read that. As you get older, stuff yeah. starts dying. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so here's an example of of the texture. Um, this group here. And this is kind of confusing. Okay, so what I have, I have a lot of different things in this layer, but what I did was I used the texture, which is this, you can kind of see it as I turn it off and on again, as a clipping mask, and then transformed the whole group, and then added more elements, and added a new clipping mask of the texture on top of those elements, so I didn't have to worry about any seams being transformed. I feel like that was the That's longest really answer clever. to a very short question. That's really clever. So for, um, for oil and watercolor, for sure, I would recommend using those. But Abby isn't working on a texture at all, are you? No, I'm just going, I'm just free boiling it. So I love that because the, the brushes that you're using already have so much texture within them. Yeah, this um, Nostalgic Illustration Pack is still one of my favorites. I made it... Um, to emulate the textures that you can see in um, a children's book that I have called A Fly Went By, which is illustrated by an uh, illustrator called Fritz Siebel. And the textures are just delicious. And I couldn't get away from them. I thought I have to figure a way to recreate this. Um, so that's where that came from. I love that so much. Um the images that you did for those, like the preview images, all of the illustrations uh, that you put on your Instagram leading up to the release of yeah, the um, pack are so iconic. I love. I enjoy them. doing, I really, some, sometimes you can see when I'm really having fun, um, the, the stuff that I make just seems nicer. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily know like all of your stuff looks excellent. And so it's hard to, hard to tell, but for some well, reason at the beginning, it out in my memory for sure. At the beginning of this year, I had a real low period. I just couldn't make anything. I sat in front of my iPad thinking, am I ever going to be able to make things again? Oh. It was a terrible feeling. And then I slowly came out of it. I think this year and last year have just all compounded and it's been an absolute poo festival. It, it really has been. It's so draining. Um, yeah. The like extended period of time that this has been. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the political climate last year was so stressful and just everything compounded. And, and yeah. it didn't end. It, it so didn't weird. end. No. No. Um, I sometimes feel like um, when things do end and things do get better, that that feeling of relief can sometimes feel so anticlimactic that you actually get depressed. Yeah, I think that's because you've been in this tense, like oh, panic mode for so long. I think that's such a um, astute observation because, yeah, you're right. They're like panic and stress is so intense yeah but it's really just like the absence of that yeah exactly you sort of steal yourself for so long that you can't get used to not being in a state of emergency yeah and i i really don't think that um the way that like the news cycle and oh my gosh twitter is 
helped at all in that regard because everything is made to drive clicks and yeah like these really dramatic headlines and so yeah 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 there's currently um serious unrest in south africa and i've noticed that there are news outlets who are actually um trying to instigate racial tension almost they'll go into places and interview people and go you know is there racial tension and when the person starts talking about no their community is actually coming together and tidying up and rebuilding the interviewer gets disappointed because you know he came there for racial tension it's just not getting it it's it's such a disconnect from the humanity of those situations yeah. because from a human at a, at a human level like that's a wonderful outcome to hear it doesn't make yeah any, um clickable a news story but that's what <laughs> no. we want right yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah i man i hope your family stays safe that is scary yeah i i think they're they're okay for now uh, they're going to have to learn how to bake bread and grow veggies and stuff, but they'll be fine. Yeah. Um, thankfully, like having the internet, there's so much good information. Yeah, there is actually. There about is. Those things, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I saw a lot of people go through a bread baking phase of the pandemic and quarantine. Yeah, there, there was there was sort of the bread phase. <laughs> yeah. My oldest son has become a bread making fanatic. That's and awesome. he just spontaneously makes bread every now and again. I can't complain. I think it's the best thing. <laughs> that is so great. I mean it benefits your whole family. <laughs> yeah and fresh baked bread the whole family comes downstairs queuing for their slice. Yeah. Absolutely. My husband went through a big phase before the pandemic um, where he like had, I don't know, 20 different sourdough starters and he was like wow. experimenting with different flowers. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it was it was very fun. Um, I was like, I definitely killed several starters. <laughs> 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 like he'd have them in the oven with just the light on because it was the perfect temperature for them yeah. to to grow and feed and i would turn on the oven to preheat it <laughs> it was it was rough yeah <laughs> but the baked bread was not it was amazing it was it's actually been a really long time since he's made bread so i'm kind of sad about it does he still have a starter in the fridge or the deep freeze just waiting for a better moment you know, it is deep in the fridge, but I don't I don't know if it's still alive. My mom found my starter and she threw it out. She said, what is this bottle of rotten stuff? And she just chucked the whole thing out. And um, that was the end was, of my sourdough experience. Oh, was it yours very <laughs> old? Well, I mean, it wasn't thriving, but it would have come back to life if I'd been yeah. a bit kinder to it. Okay, I'm ready to make my pattern. Awesome. So let me see what I've got. Don't want me to get that small. And I will use this time to try to catch up. So I've got these two roses and I've got these little yellow flowers. It's not going to be what I'd call elaborate, but I mean, it'll be it'll be okay. I'm going to make that a little bit. So I'm just going to flatten these because I don't want to have too many layers. Turn that reference off so it doesn't keep doing funny stuff. I'm making my line work linear burn so it sort of mixes a little bit with the colors I've put underneath. And, or should I say, your line work? because I didn't draw a thing. <laughs> um, you added to it. Okay, right. Uh, now we can just arrange these. If we make them a tiny bit smaller, we can fit more on. Oh, 
Also, I, I was totally wrong. The follicle is not dead. Um, oh, yes, finally. Dead, you wouldn't have hair growing out of it. So, <laughs> like, balding. Um, and hair and nails, of course, are already dead cells. So, you do have dead things on you, but it's not... not not so we don't have zombie um, scalp. Yeah. Good. Okay. I'm going to keep one of these for later. Actually, if I flatten these two, then I can make another pair and put them in the corners. So these two go down there. So I've got this nice little frame to work in. So can you see that they're all perfectly spaced? Yeah, that is. And I can just flatten like, that. Like witchcraft. Now I might actually put one of these. Let's do some more of those so that they. If we put that there. So I want it to be there ultimately, but let's put it Harvey's on there. And this one over here to line it up nicely. Harvey's on there. Join them. There we go. I actually want them to be above them. And maybe I can still see those through there. So I'll just rub that out. This little bit. Cool. Doesn't matter about that one because it's hanging off the edge and you can't see it. Um, let's turn this one back on. Maybe turn it around. Maybe have it coming over here. So let's get a pair of those matching vertically. Okay, it's halfway. And let's make another one. Keep one in the bank. Um, there we go. Group them. Now those, whoops, not moving the group, just moving the guy. Let's have them. Maybe there. But if they hang off there, then I'm going to have to make another one there. So maybe I'm just going to be lazy and put it here. Now, a little yellowies. Oh, thanks for think... joining us, Natalie. I hope you have a good rest of your night. Enjoy your girls' night out. That sounds like so much fun. Awesome. Bye. Bye. And yeah, we're running late. Um, so if yeah. anybody, obviously, you know, you can go. <laughs> Um, this will be available on replay uh, that you can watch just like a normal YouTube video on my channel. Um, it takes a little while to process, but by tomorrow morning, it'll probably be up and running. Sorry, yeah. I interrupted you. Oh, don't worry. I wasn't saying anything vital. I was just basically talking to myself like a lunatic. Um, these... Shall we put these? Maybe they don't need to be like that. And that's a pair. Get them together so they don't get lost. Like that. Let's have a couple of these. Oh, hang on, I've run out of layers. Let's delete some here. I don't need both of those. I don't need that. And those can actually be merged. And where am I? Oh, here. That would look nice like that. So let's line it up 
you can use any side of the square to create your to line up your elements so here this little yellow flower i'm just making sure it's halfway off and halfway on the square i don't even know if it's in the center but when i move this one i'm going to watch it line up see and there's when you see the blue line go whoops up the middle then you know that is so that fantastic i don't up. think i don't think i've noticed to move elements around like that um that it lines it up to different things so hang on this is actually going a bit funny because i've got all of these still visible and it's trying to line them up to those as well so here let's you line them up there line them up there and now we can group them and they'll be perfectly in the right spot oh one of those needs to go off so this little group i'm going to put maybe here like that and i'll make one more of him did i save any no did they get that? Cool. And I think I need a pink flower in the center somewhere. I agree. Yeah. Maybe one of these babies. And flip it and put it. Now, put it all the way at the back. Okay. Now I can. I'm so excited for this. So. Group those all. If you want to save um, some of them so that they don't get cut in half or whatever, just make a duplicate of each of the ones you want to keep and keep so them Jones, outside of the group. Jones asks, is there a section of the square that you should not put elements because they would not repeat correctly? Um, not, no. You, what you want to make sure you do is that you have um, what, that if anything sticks into the square, it must also stick out of the square and vice versa. So for example, the, these two flowers, um, the top right and um, the top left. Can you see the three leaves? There are three leaves coming into the square and those exact three leaves are sticking out the opposite side. So it's almost like you want to, um, as one visitor arrives, another one leaves <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, Correct me if I'm wrong, you wouldn't want things crossing over the bounds of the canvas, correct? No, because if it goes off the edge of the canvas and it's getting cut off, um, but it doesn't matter as long as um, it's not cut off at the edge of the square. Okay. okay so. Right. Now, remember, we need that one filled square that's made invisible. You can turn these off. And we're going to resize it to double the size of the actual canvas. So it's going to be 1,000, no, 12,000 pixels. And then we're going to put it back in the center when our orange lines make the cross. And then you want you can flatten it at this point and then you're ready to make your repeat this is my favorite part i know me too then i suddenly go oh, it works <laughs> there you go it's it is it's all. so gratifying yeah so it's actually not that hard. That is okay, let's see yours. Okay, so here's where I am at. 
Um, so I have. Oh, those are lovely. Let's see. I guess I can hide my. Okay, so I am going to duplicate this so that I can use these elements uh, after I transform, I can add more to it. And then I'm going to do the same um, transform steps that I did before. So say, uh, load my saved selections, starting with one, and then transform and flip it horizontally and vertically. And let me actually turn on my guide so you can see. So I'd start with guide one. And then selection three. I can hide my guide now. And now I have more gaps that I want to fill in. With this style of pattern making, you um, want to keep everything away from the edges because this is the pattern repeat, whereas what Abby was demonstrating, you have that working room on the outside. So it's it's two different methods of visualizing it too. Yeah. And because everything is rotated, my pattern is upside down, so I'm just going to flip it. And here's where I turn on my other group, and this is going to look very messy for a moment. Um, but actually, I'm going to hide that. And separate some of this out. Thank you. Thank you, my love. My wonderful family bringing me some drinks. <laughs> are you still able to? I know we are so past. We're like half an hour past. Is this still okay for you, Abby? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So let's use those to move around. My original group here was on the bottom. And so I'm going to put these inside that group on the top. And I had merged everything. I'd flattened all my layers. So for this, I actually don't think I need a clipping mask of texture on them. Because they already have the texture here. Yeah. And then reposition them. You know what? I'm actually going to pull this one out and use that on the next step. Oh, I didn't want it in that group. OK, so then I'm back down on my um, bottom layer. I am going to just draw in a couple more leaves quick. And for my outlines, I'm using the felt tip anchor brush from this. Okay, so That's now- That's a really I... nice brush, that felt tip anchor. Oh, thank you. Um, next, I'm going, oh, oh. My cat joined me on my lap. Where <laughs> did her automatic feeder go? And she is, she is ready to go eat. Okay. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I no. love the color and the outfit and everything. She is the cutest thing. She is. <laughs> oh, She's man. so funny. Look at your 
Oh man, I was telling Gabby, we got was I telling you? I don't know. We got an automatic fear for the cat. Yes, we did. You were yeah. telling me. <laughs> and she hears the food hit the bowl and she just <laughs> runs. Like, this is not an athletic cat. And <laughs> when she hears the food go, like, I've never seen anything faster. Oh, she is she is something else. You can never guess from the outfit that she wasn't an athletic cat. Oh my gosh. Well, she's got uh I think spade uh female cats usually get a bit of a belly or often get a bit of a belly. So she's just got like a perma um gut that like hangs <laughs> down a little bit. But she like she has the uh carefully measured out food for a reason she just will gorge herself and then like throw up oh it's brilliant much. that is brilliant don't you yeah. love it <laughs> you know what i'm just looking at this way of that i did the repeat before and i could it's actually just as easy to make a half drop oh i'm, I'm having like a, a light bulb cogs grinding moment here yeah. keep going okay i'm gonna quick transform this and then yeah. i can no 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 don't worry you don't have to come back to me yet i'm still <laughs> in the development phase well i turned on my second guide layer so i know which ones to select so i'm going to select selection five and then transform that and selection two and flip this horizontally and vertically. And selection four. And now I can turn off my guide layer again. And I don't think I'm even going to add. Maybe I'll add a flower in here. Um, I'm going to keep my whole group selected and use freehand select to trace around this one flower and so I can then adjust it. And I am not sure if you can even tell on the screen, but this is something that definitely freaked me out the first time that I noticed when you um, when you're transforming things like this with a paper texture, the paper texture disappears while you're transforming it. Yes, I have noticed that. Um, also, sometimes when you're transforming and you have text involved, it won't show the bounding box around the text, and that freaks me out too. Oh, you know what? I might have messed up my... Speaking of paper textures, I actually should not have done that. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is make it so that I can fit one more flower in here. All right, now I'm going to test out the pattern. So to do that, I am collapsing my group and then I'm going to swipe three fingers down to bring up this menu and then I'm going to hit copy all and then swipe again and paste. And what this does is it pastes a flattened version of your full group and then I'll duplicate this five times so that I can make the half drop repeat. And I use that copy canvas uh, so often that I've actually got it in my quick menu because um, when I'm making brushes, I just do copy canvas and paste straight into the brush thing. Um, lots of people save their actual brush shapes and stuff, um, but I don't do that. So let's hope my procreate doesn't blow up one day otherwise I'll be yeah. yeah um that is super brilliant because I don't know but like I work with one hand on this side usually and so it makes sense you just one tap of your finger 
yeah. versus the picking up your hand and three finger swipe. Um, just like with Abby's, you'll want to make sure that you have magnetics and snapping on for this and distance and velocity turned all the way to max. And that will allow you to position each tile of the square. And so for the first one, I'm going until it's at that halfway mark. And you see the gold lines going up and I'm just shrinking that into a quarter of the canvas. And then I'm going to move down to the next layer and do the same on the bottom. And then on the third layer down, what we're going to do is create the half drop repeat. And so we're doing one into the center. So the seam of the pattern is aligned with the center of this third tile, if that makes sense. And actually didn't even check to make sure that that was perfectly at the halfway amount. Okay making sure you have the gold guides and then moving down to the fourth one. Oh, keep it on uniform transform. This one I'm shrinking into the corner and then I'm going to slide it until I see the horizontal gold guide that indicates that it's halfway off of the canvas. And then for the last one, same, but mirrored. And there's, there's the repeat. Yay. Oh, that is such a nice pattern. Oh, thanks. It's what I like about your method is you, you can see the, you can visualize the repeat a little more. I think for this, I so often have to go in and make tweaks. Like I might, if I were to edit this, I would probably want to add um, maybe another leaf here and yeah. just make it a little more balanced. But um, I feel like, your method uh, kind of like fast tracks that. I think I have made a half drop. Let's see. If it's not, um, bad luck to me. <laughs> uh, what is in here? Oh, those are my leftovers. Let's flatten this and put the invisible layer. Turn it off, make it into a group, and now I'm going to make it 12,000. Make it go into the center. Okay, you and I both are as eager to find out of this way. <laughs> okay, let's see. So, one there. One there, one there, one there, and one. <gasps> did it work? Yay! Yes, it did. I love it. Did. it. Um, okay, so the way that I did that was. I used the um, purple square, and then instead of making things go in fours, I made them go in threes. So, for example, let's turn this on um, and make three of them. So instead of positioning one on each corner, I positioned, whoops, let's make it go on there, halfway up there, this one, halfway there and this one I did halfway there so now okay when I group them can put them like that and then um, let's take one of these out so I can save them for later you can flatten that I put them with my invisible layer, make it one, two thousand, and put it in the center. Now that is the half drop repeat. So that is genius. It works. I am. <laughs> Yay! 
Amazing. There you go. It works. Okay. So um I also wanted to quick throw in a couple troubleshooting tips of questions that I, I get. Um that I think would apply to both of these methods to avoid yes. getting seams. So the, the first thing which Abby um, said as, as she walked through at the beginning was to make sure that you have snapping and magnetics turned on yes. and velocity and the other slider all the way to max. And then mm -hmm. um, that will allow you to follow the guides. And part of it is just paying attention to make sure that you have the gold guides um, I know I undid and went back a couple times. You can always reset a transformation. Yeah. Um, because Procreate has a nudge feature where if you tap or if your palm is resting on the side, yeah. it's really it's possible to move a whole selection just a pixel or two. And that having that off will um, yeah. cause a seam in your whole pattern. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, let me pop over. I know some people prefer to, when you're scaling things, um, to do it by entering in the dimensions. And if you're going to do that, I have a couple tips. Um, so if you tap on one of the nodes, this keypad pops up and you can, oh my gosh, this is not an easy one to <laughs> divide. Um, 1250, right? Okay. No. Um, is it 1250? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, math is not my strong suit. Um, so when you're here, what you want to make sure you do is, um, or don't do, you don't want to tap outside of this yeah. because doing so moves yeah. the selection just yeah. one, one tiny little bit. And so when I tap undo, I don't know if you saw the message pop up, but it said undo nudge layer. And so, yeah. um, to avoid that, when you have the keypad pulled up, you can tap in this negative space and it'll hide it. Um, or you can switch to one of these tools. But if you tap the transform arrow, it doesn't go. If you tap no. the layers panel, it doesn't disappear. So no. it's, it's finicky, um, just something to keep in mind. The place where I tap when I'm trying not to nudge and I have the number panel open is I tap the little blue zigzag that says snapping in the bottom panel and it makes it go away. Oh, okay. And it doesn't nudge. And it doesn't bring up that box that you'd then have to close. No. Again. Okay. No. That's I wonder if, oh, you can tap any of these. Okay. So you can, I should double check before I say this. Okay. You can tap anywhere on the bar, it looks like you don't just have to go for that negative space. Because even even tapping fit to screen, it didn't change anything. Yeah, because that nudge, that one pixel nudge, it is the most diabolical thing. It's yeah. just, it screws me over so often. Yeah, it, oh my gosh. It drives me nuts. Um, but it is useful when you actually do want to move yeah, something. Yeah, it is exactly, exactly. So, yeah, I can show you. Oh, you're probably, I went off the canvas. I was going to try to show just the, like, the error that it causes. But um, let me. Okay, so this was, I know, almost two hours, super long, but I would be super curious whether you're watching this live, which thank you mm -hmm. to all, all of you who joined us live, um, but whether you're watching it live or you're watching the replay later, how you feel about this like slower paced stream. Um, yeah. We've been talking about like, you know, what if we just did like a chill draw and stream and found a way to um, have you guys share what you're working on too. Let us know if you're yeah. interested in that. I'd be super curious. Yeah, because I could sit here and chat to Addy and draw for hours. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I just think it'd be so cool to interact with you guys more. And yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what we'd like to know. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Pink Tree Portfolio, which I'm sorry, I don't remember. 
I know you're on social media as a, um, like, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, I, I don't remember off the top of my head what, what your name is, but um, Elizabeth and Jones and everybody that joined us, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys. All right, we will see you next time. Yeah, bye. Bye.